Well, welcome everybody. How we doing? Wow. You know, if we haven't met, my name's Serena, and I have the joy, honor, and privilege of being the young adult pastor here. So if it is your first time, wave your hand at me real quick. Let me see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's welcome them. So happy that you came out on a Thursday night. Can we do something that we do every week? Pull out your Bibles if you would. But guys, even before we get into this, as you lift up your Bibles, whether it's electronic or, you know, it's a digital Bible, phone Bible app, or a physical Bible, what I'm going to talk about tonight has to do with this. So when we say this, can we say this with some passion, say this like we mean it? Because when we say it out loud, something activates on the inside. So y'all with me? Let's say it together. Here we go. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the word of God. I'll never be the same. Never, never, never. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. Come on, give somebody a Bible high five next to you. That's right. <laughs> well, welcome to September. We are, we are, we're in September, guys. How did this even happen? But as you know, we're starting a new series called Hot Takes. And um, hot take, not takes. And we're going to be diving into some big questions. Um, but before I begin, I just, I kind of want to start with this and just share a little bit of my heart for you. My heart for tonight is not to persuade you or uh, maybe even cause fear to come upon you so you'll come to believe. My heart for you is this. If anything, I'm, I'm compelled to help steer us in the right direction, to help guide us into what I believe that Jesus would want for his church today. And so um, that's my heart. I just want you to know that every single week, we just want to help equip you so that you can have a better understanding to walk out this thing called living out a life of faith. Amen? All right, so to kick off the, the series thought it would only be fitting to answer kind of a basic, fundamental question that many of us have asked at some point, or maybe you hear it a lot even today, and that has to do with this book. It's, is the Bible true? Can we trust a book that was written by human beings, right? One thing I will start off by saying is here, this is what we believe. We believe that the Bible is true. We believe that it is the truth of God. And we believe in what 2 Timothy 3.16 says. It says that all scripture is God-breathed. So we believe that, yeah, maybe God didn't physically take the pen and place it in their hand and write the pages. What well, we do believe that God helped along in the process. We believe that God inspired every single word that is written on every single page. Amen? So let's pray tonight. God, I thank you so much for just this amazing group of individuals. God, thank you that we get to walk out our faith and grow together and gain understanding together. But God, I thank you for your word. I thank you that it is so alive. It is so active. And God, tonight I pray, God, if there's any bit of misunderstanding that we may have about this book, Lord, I pray that you would reveal yourself, God, through these words, God. I thank you, Father, for the opportunity to teach from it. And I just pray that you would just give us ears to hear, give us understanding, help us to grow in wisdom and stature as we open up this book. We love you and we praise you. And everybody said, 
Amen. All right, so if you do have your Bible, turn with me, if you would, to the book of John. We're going to start in John chapter 1. It should be on the screen as well. In fact, let's read it together, shall we? Let's go. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. Woo! Mic drop. Mic drop. All right. I'm going to try to do my best to unpack this with the time that we have. In the Bible, there are four Gospels that, uh, that are in the New Testament, the, the back end of the Bible, right? And they are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Of the four Gospels, they all have different writers. And we just read from one, John right here. Each writer brings something a little bit different. Each of them write from their understanding of Jesus or work of him or inv investigation of him. So you've got Matthew. Matthew was a tax collector, right? Uh, you've got Mark. Mark was someone who, who worked with those who started the first church. You've got Luke. Luke, he was a doctor physician. So he investigated and fact-checked everything about Jesus' ministry. And then you have John, which we read from. And John, he was one of Jesus' disciples. Now, like I said, each of them would write something very different. And they would... Some would have the same story, the same premise. Now, the reason why I share this is that each of them wrote to a very specific audience. Why is that important? Because context is important as we're reading the Bible. A lot of times we'll see people will pull certain things and use it either towards their advantage or not without understanding the full context. So you've got Matthew, back to Matthew. He wrote to the Jews. He used to work for the Jews as a tax collector, right? But he's talking about Jesus to the Jews and saying Jesus was real. You've got Mark who wrote to the, the Roman citizens and his account was to share who Jesus was, his heart and how he served. You have Luke who wrote to the Gentiles who were considered the non-Jews. And as he investigated, what he shared was that Jesus was without sin, and so he came to pay the ultimate sacrifice and uh, price for us. And then you have John. And John, he wrote to the new believers. So he shared that Jesus is the Son of God. If you believe in him, you would have eternal life. So time out real quick. If you are maybe new to the faith or coming back to the faith, we always say something here. If you're like, I don't know where to start, John is a great book to start reading about who Jesus was. It's 21 chapters. So you could read a chapter a day for 21 days or read it for the whole month, but it's an awesome place uh, to start with him. Now, every single gospel, they were different. However, they also, their differences, what it helped us understand today and helps us understand today is that the differences were actually evidence to show that the gospels were not really some sort of conspiracy, right? If they were all exactly the same, each of them gave account to different audiences. So going back to John 1, in the beginning was the word. Y'all with me? We're, we're going into it. All right. John is saying that the, in the beginning was the word. Who is he talking about? He's talking about Jesus. Jesus is the word that he's talking about. Jesus is the living word who came and reveals the father to us that John's talking about. Now, in the Old Testament, the beginning of the Bible, what you'll find is that the writer, maybe even in Genesis, in the beginning, it talks about the old creation, but it all points to, kind of like Pastor Jeremy said in the video, it all points to Jesus. And so the Old Testament is, point, is talking about old creation, but it talks about the one who is to come. In the New Testament, like we see with John, 
He's talking about the one who has come and who is to come again. Somebody say, Jesus is coming back, y'all. <laughs> I appreciate that. I, I felt that. So what's the point of all of this stuff, Serena, all this information? I'm glad you asked. We must learn as believers, as studiers of the word, that in order to know the truth, or actually to know the truth, know the truth. Let me get my thought together. Know the truth before you can expose the lie. So a lot of times what we see is many people, they reject the Bible without actually even reading it right? Now, you know it's a lie unless, you won't know it's a lie unless you actually read it fully. You won't know if it's the truth unless you find out about it. And how do you find out about it? You find out when you read it. So here's a thought. If the Bible claims to answer some of life's deepest, most profound questions, then wouldn't you say that it makes sense at minimum to see what it says? So before exploring all the various options, my challenge to you as I had to challenge myself in my own life one day was to discover the Bible fully. I remember in college, this is after I gave my life to Jesus, and I was walking out my faith walk with him. And I remember taking a class, very specific class, and it was on religious studies. I loved this class. Uh, I, you know, for me growing up, I had so many different friends, all different, all different races, all different religious beliefs. So a lot of my closest friends, though, they were either Hindu or Muslim or agnostic, Buddhist or atheist right? So I'm sitting in this class. I just started following Jesus, and I'm opening up myself to all of the history and all of the different information and knowledge that was being poured out. And as I was doing that, I, I, I realized I had exposed myself to so much. I started reading and, and studying various religions, wanting to know more about that more than I was diving into this, and I came to a point where I heard just a still small voice deep in here, and I heard God say to me, if you want to know what's real, engulf yourself in this fully first. Start here first, and then you can make a more accurate judgment call. Then and only then can you discover what the difference is. So if maybe you're in a place where you've been exposed to a lot of different thoughts. I mean, it's 2023. It happens. And maybe you're in that place where you're like, I know about these ideologies. I would encourage you with this. Don't dabble into everything. Uh, some things are dangerous. Let's just be real. And, and some things uh, are far too beyond our understanding. Um, the Bible talks about it being a war in this world, not between person to person, flesh to flesh, but, but it's a spiritual war. There's a spiritual war that is, is going on. We're going to talk more about that next week. Talking about crystals and all kind of karma and all kinds of things. So stay tuned. Back to the word. <laughs> I think the biggest challenge for us today is that there's so many blurred lines. Would you agree? And, and so it's so hard to really fully understand. It's like maybe it's okay if I read the horoscopes because didn't Jesus make the stars and the sun and the sky? And, and, but it's okay if I do the tarot cards and I'm going to read my Bible too, right? Um, and then you got the TikTok truth <laughs> over the personal revelation truth, 
right? Where I'm reading this and, man, something is coming alive as I'm reading this. This is coming from here, not from anything I've watched or listened to. So we got to start opening this up. We got to start discovering this for ourselves. We have to not just take someone else's word for it. Amen? All right. The other thing I want to encourage you with is this. And I mean this with no judgment at all. Jesus welcomes questions. Questions are okay. We all have questions. You know, before you Google it, go to God. It's okay to ask God questions. And here's something that I think is going to help us a little bit. It's just an acronym. Um, and I think we might have a diagram for it, but ask, right? So the A starts with or stands for ask. Ask questions. Let your questions even be prayers. God, I don't understand why there's suffering in the world. Could you reveal this to me? What is your plan for humanity? God, this doesn't make sense to me. God, would you just tell me what this is as I open up your word? Would you give me just ears to hear? Would you give me understanding? Jesus himself said in Luke, uh, Luke chapter 9, I'm sorry, 11 verse 9. Let me go there. He says, so I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. He says, seek, and you will find. He says, knock, and the door will be open to you. I'll keep going. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be open. Isn't that good? That was Jesus' words. Nobody else said that. The S stands for seek. See, all the questions, many times, that it, can get, it, get to, it can get to be a lot, but we, we cannot forget that there's a second half, half of that verse, and it is to seek. <laughs> we can ask, but then we got to start seeking, right? It says that the one who seeks will find. So what does seeking look like? We're just going to get basic. Why not, right? It might seem basic. I think it's great. Maybe your first step today is, man, I'm going to just get a good Bible I can read. Maybe I just need to get a, a good study Bible. Sometimes in a year, I'll get a different Bible. I'll, I'll just get, like, I want to hear a different perspective. This past year, I got a chronological study Bible. I've, I've had a, a Bible that has multiple translations that are in there. Sometimes people ask me, what Bible do you read? What translation do you read? I read from five different translations sometimes. I'll read one verse, and I'm like, ooh, I want to see what it says in this verse. So it'll be the, the uh, New Living Translation, NLT, the NIV, the, the uh, New International Version. I'll read the Message Translation sometimes. One of my favorites is the Passion Translation, if you've ever had tried. It's, it's not fully translated. And I also like the New King James Version. That's just for you. If, if you're like, man, where do I start? What do I do? Maybe for you, it's, it's to just get some good understanding. Just get some good resources in, right? For my visual learners, where are you at? Yes. I recommend watching a video. And I, you know, I think that their teachings are great, but it's the Bible Project. And they will break things down visually for you. So if you're like, what is it? You know, I said Google it before. You, you can Google that, okay? It's okay. Google it. But the Bible Project will break things down and give you visuals and give you history and context. You know, it might even be a podcast. I'm not against podcasts. Podcasts are great. But don't allow that to be the one thing that you're listening to. Again, it comes down to not just you hearing someone else's perspective. But when we open this up, God begins to give you your own perspective of this as well. Amen? Seeking means that you do the digging, you do the reading, you do the discovering. And so the last one of ask is K. Can you guess what K stands for? That's it. 
knock. To me, I think a knock is bold, okay? I think it's persistent. It's like around that time, I don't know what month it is. Do y'all know what month it is when Girl Scout cookies, like what season is that? And my neighbor's kids, they're so sweet, but they always come to the door, and it's like, they will not leave until I open, and I'm like, no, no. And I'm like, okay, fine. I open up the door. I'm like, I'll have six boxes of Thin Mints and then two of the Samoas. Those are the two best ones, right? Are there any other good ones? Samo, the Samoas. Lemon, lemonade, lemonade, lemonade. Thank you. Everybody's hungry. Everyone's going to go order cookies. <laughs> so, I also think of this. You have to physically use your hand to knock on a door. And to me, I feel like that represents some personal action, right? And so, what is the promise when you knock? Come on. The door will be open. How can we be sure of that? If this is the word of God, and we believe that the word of God is true. The word of God says this in Luke. We just read chapter 11. Ask me, right? Jeremiah 33, 3. He says, call upon me. The word of God says, John 14, 18. I won't leave you uncomforted like orphans. He said, I will come to you, right? Genesis, from the very beginning, he says, I am with you. Another thing about asking, which I find great comfort in, is this. Is that even the disciples, the ones who were closest to him, they had questions. Right? When Jesus appears to the disciples right after they saw him nailed to a cross and put in a grave and he resurrected when they saw him in Luke 24, 37, it says, they were startled and frightened. That doesn't sound faith-filled to me. <laughs> and, and so Jesus still chose to reveal himself to them. That gives me some hope and comfort, right? And then it goes on to say, Jesus says in verse 38 of Luke 24, he says, why are you so troubled? Why do doubts rise in your mind? See, questions, they're okay. Doubts, they're okay. However, as believers, we must understand that sometimes there are some answers that we're just not going to get 100% of the time, and we got to be okay with that. Because God is God. He's all-powerful. He's all-knowing. I mean, think about it this way. If God were to tell you right now, this is what you're going to do, this is going to get married, this is going to da da and then this is how you're going to die. I mean, does it even require any faith at all? Right? Or, or would we be slaves to a God who says, this is what you're going to do? Yes, master, robot, you know, okay. Right? But God is so loving. He's so loving that he gave you the choice to choose him. That's good. Leads me to my final thought. Faith equals trust. All right? There's a, a, a famous celebrity, and I see, the, the, I see this quote that they've, they've quoted. They are no longer living. I see it around, plastered all over the place, and, and sometimes when I read it, I'm not going to lie, it, it, it makes me feel a little uncomfortable. And what they said is, trust no one but yourself, right? It, it makes me feel uncomfortable, not out of judgment, but I think it's just because for me when I hear that, I hear maybe the pain behind that statement. The pain of, you know what, I've been hurt before, so I can't trust anybody but myself. And I know, if I'm honest, I've been in that place as well. But as a believer, we must trust that God is in control, period. Right? I heard this quote by, by Randy Conley. He said that people often distrust the opposite I'm sorry, the people often think distrust is the opposite of trust, but that's just not the case. The opposite of trust 
is control. And we don't trust because we don't want to lose control. And so maybe it's, you know, control of the unknown variables of life. God, I don't know. What, what do you say about this stuff in my life? What does it say in the Bible about this? Like, am I going to get married? Will I even, do I want to get married? What's going to be next for me? God, are you going to take care of my family? Am I going to struggle my whole life? Am I going to do something impactful and significant with my life? We have all of those questions. But the very fact that you are alive, my friends, is a miracle <laughs> and science proves Proves it. Can I share this with you? Stand to your feet if you can. Stand to your feet. Do you know the odds that you are existing right now? A scientist who would later come to the faith, he calculated. The, the probability of you existing exactly as you are at this very moment in time. You want to know what that was? One in 400 trillion. <laughs> You're one in 400 trillion. You serve the God of one in 400 trillion that thought so far ahead. To make you. The Bible were not true. What about that verse that says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. If the Bible were not true, would he say, before you were born, I set you apart. If the Bible were not true, what about that verse that says, I know the very number of hairs on your head, if you have hair. <laughs> if Jesus, if he wasn't real, why would people bother to write about him? Do you know that there are 25,000 to 30,000 handwritten copies of the New Testament that have survived over time? If people didn't believe that this was true, would Jesus' followers go to their grave to proclaim about a Savior? If this wasn't true, would we say, well, this book speaks about this God who would put people in various places and along paths thousands upon thousands of years ago that line up and fulfill not only history but prophecy. And each of those point towards one person, and that is the person, Jesus, who was sent for you and I. It's pretty mind-boggling if you think about it. I'll end with this story, and I kind of want to read this to you. I thought it was amazing. It's a story about Billy Graham. Billy Graham, if you don't know who he is, he's a, a great American evangelist. And he's spoken to diplomats and presidents and had great revivals and tent meetings all around the world, crusades. And so it reads, in 1949, Billy Graham was facing a crossroads in his ministry. He was already a believer. He had already done much for God. If he couldn't come to the belief that the Bible was indeed the word of God, he believed that he'd have to give up his ministry. And so he wrestled over the question. And eventually, on a late night walk in 1949, he cried out to God. He prayed, oh God, there are many things in the book that I don't understand. There's problems that I don't have a solution for. And then he took a step of faith. And then he said, Father, I'm going to accept this as your word by faith. I'm going to allow faith to go beyond my intellectual questions and my doubts. I'm going to let faith 
Help lead me to believe that this is your inspired word. He died 69 years later. On February 21st, 2018, to the very end, professing about the name of Jesus and holding true to his word. I think for many of us, we stay in in that place of wrestling. And we wonder if God is real and if this is true, but there's so many contradictions. There's this, there's that. God, I don't know. There's so many opinions and thoughts. But my hope and my prayer for us is that maybe we, like Billy Graham, maybe we go home. And we cry out to God. Maybe we have some conversations, some real ones with him. And we open up his word and say, okay, God, reveal it to me. Reveal it to me. What does this mean? What is your plan? What do I have to do with this? And let him begin to talk to you. And then we would grow more and more in wisdom and stature and understanding of the word of God. My prayer for us young adults is that we would fall in love with this book more and more. Like this is not a fairy tale book. (laughs) It's real. And it's the truth. Y'all receive it tonight?